welcome back. In the last class we presented Aristotelian theory of syllogism, where we uh, discussed in extens extensively about the validity of syllogisms and we presented five rules for the validity of syllogism with which one can come to know what kind of syllogism is valid etc and all. So, the rules are like this that you know how uh, when uh, middle term needs to be distributed at least once in the premises nothing no term is distributed in the conclusion which is distributed in the premises and if you have two negative premises nothing can be inferred. In the same way if you have two particular propositions that means I propositions there is no way in which you can infer anything. And the one of the final rules is this that which is a little bit controversial that is uh, this that in Aristotelian logic uh, if uh, there are two universal propositions yet you can infer a particular kind of proposition and all. So, this is not permitted in the modern logics because so we will be borrowing existential import into the conclusion which is actually not there in the premises and all. So, this leads to existential fallacy. So, uh, we have been discussing Aristotelian logics which have dominated for more than 2000 years um, and then it, it, it served as a paradigm for uh, this logics and all. So, uh, there are uh, certain important features in Aristotelian logic uh, they are this that they are closer to the natural language and then the rules are easy to apply, but it has its own limitations and all. So, in this class uh, what we will be doing is we will be, we'll be continuing our discussion with uh, this uh, famous uh, syllogistic poem due to Aristotle and this poem conveys us lot of information and all. So, what information it conveys is like this. So, this is the syllogistic uh, poem that uh, we have uh, uh, it is like this Barbara, Silarent, Dari, Firio, Q. So, this stands for the four syllogisms that are valid unconditionally valid in figure number 1. Cesare, Chemistres, Festino, Barocco, etcetera they are all valid in figure number 2. So, these figures are um, uh, these figures are formed just uh, based on how the middle term is actually distributed and all. So, based on how the middle term is distributed Aristotle classified into four figures and out of each figure uh, there are 64 moods possible per each figure and out uh, in total there are 256 such kind of moods are possible and out of that only 15 are unconditionally valid and 9 are said to be conditionally valid. So, we will uh, we'll try to analyze this uh, syllogistic poem with which the people in the ancient past in the Greek period uh, they remembered everything based on this particular kind of poem. So, each word let us say if I say Barbara we need to look for the vowels and the consonants and all. For example, in the case of Barbara the vowels are a a a that means it is an a a a kind of syllogism that means there are two universal propositions a propositions and we have a another kind of proposition a which is considered as a conclusion. So, for example, all x are y all y are z and all x are z that comes under a a a kind of proposition and then we uh, silarent means we have we have to look for the vowels here that is e a e. And then not only that thing uh, right from the second uh, stanza and words that is Cesare, chemistries etc and all. So, these consonants also conveys us some kind of information. According to Aristotle only uh, the moods which fall under figure number 1 are considered to be perfect moods whereas, the ones which fall under third and fourth figure are considered to be imperfect and all even the second figure as well. So, that means, so we will be talking in this class about the reduction of syllogisms and all reduction of syllogism in the sense that whatever falls under figure number 3, 4, 2 etcetera they are all can be reduced to uh, the moods in, in figure number 1. So, there are some rules for uh, 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 reducing this uh, syllogisms into uh, the syllogisms of the first figure. So, why Aristotle considers as figure number 1 as uh, uh, con considered to be a perfect figure because it is in the sense that uh, the, the middle term is nicely distributed in the first figure rather than the other figures and all. So, this is the way in which uh, the middle term is distributed and I will look into this uh, syllogistic poem in greater detail. So, the distribution of uh, middle term is like this in the first case in the first figure we have like this and these are some predicate and if is a subject here this is in figure number 1 and figure number 2 
we have uh, this thing we have m m here which occupies the position of predicate and then in the in figure number 3 we have middle term here which occupies the position of a subject and in figure number 4 we have m m here. So these are the 4 figures which Aristotle could think of. So in each figure there are 50, 64 moods which are possible there are 256 such kind of syllogisms out of that only 15 are conditionally valid and 9 are uh, 15 are unconditionally valid and 9 are conditionally valid. So now uh, according to Aristotle so these are the things which are valid in figure number 1 Barbara Silarent Silarent um, some D A R I I and then Ferio Q so that is E I O preposition so now what we need to do here is to look for the ovals here a here a here and a here so that means a a a and this is with respect to figure number 1 so that is why we have written 1 here. So this gives us complete information about what kind of mode it is I mean and then it falls under what kind of figure and all. So this is considered to be the perfect figures and all and there are some other things which fall under this one all these things can be reduced to this particular kind of thing you know. So now this is E A E now we need to look for the ovals here and then here in this case A I A I I and then in this case E I O and of course this is figure number 1. So now what we will be doing uh, uh, the next 10 minutes is this that we will be trying to reduce the syllogisms that fall under uh, figure number 2, figure number 3, figure number 4 and we will try to convert it into uh, the standard uh, the perfect moods uh, which fall under figure number 1. So now this uh, syllogistic poem conveys us lot of information and all starting from the second line let us say if you have something called Cesare uh, for example if you have this particular kind of thing Cesare. So this is E a e preposition e a e preposition and it is in figure number 2. So now uh, according to the syllogistic poem this uh, over this consonants also conveys some kind of information first you need to look for the vowels that is e a e preposition and it falls under figure number 2 that means middle term should be occupying the position of a predicate and all in this case. So now so what needs to be a, a case is this that if you find uh, any silo, uh, any uh, word which starts with C and all this can only be reduced to a syllogism which starts with the letter C in figure number 1 that means Cesare can only be reduced to Silarent. So now we are trying to see how Cesare can be reduced to Silarent and all by using some kind of rules. So this is what uh, happens. Uh, in case of uh, uh, this thing. So I will work on this particular kind of thing here. So what is uh, Cesare? Mm. So this is a Latin term and all uh, we not have to worry much about it we need to worry about the vowels here. So this is E A E and 2 and then these C S etc conveys some kind of information and all. So the letters that uh, that are of importance to us importance to us are like this. So S stands for simple conversion and all for example if you have no X or Y you can convert it into no Y or X and then suppose if you have a letter M that means you need to interchange the premises a little bit and then and the other letters that we have uh, are S M and then right now we do not have any such letters uh, here. So then C is the letter which you will find it little bit later and then we will talk about that particular kind of thing. So this happens due to and there is one more letter which is called as P 
which uh, talks about um, uh, per accidents and all which we will talk about a little bit later. So all the consonants also conveys some kind of information uh, in this particular kind of uh, uh, Latin word that we are trying to use. So what is that we are saying? We are saying simply this that Cesare is the term which occurs in the second uh, uh, stanza of your syllogistic poem that means it's, it occurs in the second figure that means it can be reduced to uh, the one which is having the same uh, which is starts with the same kind of letter and all. So that means Cesare can only be reduced to Silar and all it cannot be reduced to uh, any other uh, uh, Latin word that which occurs in figure number 1 that is Dari, Ferio Q, Barbara etc. and all. So that is the reason why they have chosen these uh, letters carefully and all. Cesare mean can only be reduced to this one. So now we will see how this can be reduced to Silarent that is in figure number 1. So now what is uh, Cesare? It is like this no A's are B's and uh, all A's are uh, B's and then no C's are no C's are A. So this is the way in which uh, it is uh, the middle term is occupying the position of uh, uh, some kind of uh, predicate in all here. So the structure of this one is like this. So here is the middle term and again so this is the one. So that is the reason why this is in this falls under figure number 2. So now we are trying to reduce this thing into this one and then how do we reduce it again we need to observe this uh, Latin word carefully everything is uh, hidden in this particular kind of information. So immediately following ith oval ith oval means it here in this case the first oval immediately after this we have a letter called S. S stands for simple conversion. So simple conversion we will be talking about these three rules little bit later conversion, aversion and contraposition. Uh, conversion applies to only E preposition and I preposition and all. So we will see a little bit later. So what we will be doing is this thing. So we have a letter S here and then we need to uh, change this premises a little bit later I mean so now so observe the predicate of your conclusion this is the major term and C stands for minor term and all. So wherever you find uh, major term uh, in your premises and all that is considered to be a major premise and wherever this minor term occurs that is considered to be a minor premise and all. So here A occurs uh, no one second no A's are B's no C's are B's now sorry no C's are B's so this is the thing. So this occurs here this is a major premise minor premise and and uh, this is the conclusion now. So now how this gets converted into uh, sealer and all. So now the first thing which you need to note is this thing we are applying some simple conversion rule no A's are B's can be converted into no B's are A's because this Cesare in this Cesare it says clearly that you need to use S rule. So S rule is this that you have, you have to make some kind of simple conversion and then other things you keep it like this only. Now so this is uh, same no B's are A's all C's are B's and uh, this is no C's are A's. So now what we have done is we have applied simple conversion rule here that kind of information is coded in this particular kind of word and all because immediately after starting after the ith oval ith oval means the second oval here the first oval here we have a letter called S S stands for simple conversion we need to convert one of these premises into uh, its, its converted kind of thing and all that is E kind of rule and all a simple conversion rule we need to use. So now this becomes like this now we will observe the middle term here so middle term is here and you have a subject uh, something here and now middle term occupies the position of uh, subject here 
and it occupies the position of a predicate here. So now we have converted this Cesare 2 to Cilarent 1 by using the simple conversion rule. So this is how uh, this figure number 1 uh, the moods which fall under figure number 2 which are considered to be imperfect moods can be reduced to the perfect moods. Now. Suppose if uh, uh, it so happen that um, uh, you will come across another kind of thing let us say uh, chemistress or something like that chemistress. So this is the one which you have then this again can be reduced to only silarent and all because the corresponding letter that you find it in figure number 1 is silarent. So chemistress can also be converted into the silarent kind of thing and all. So what do we get out of these things so it tells us how uh, something which is considered to be an imperfect mode can be converted into a perfect mode uh, by using uh, some kind of rules uh, which are simple conversion per accidents and uh, some other kind of rules which is called as may m rule which is talking about uh, some kind of simple conversions and all. So here is how we make these conversions and we will go into the examples little bit later. So the first letter of uh, the Latin word that you have seen earlier corresponds to uh, so one of the perfect uh, perfect moods uh, uh, that is needs that needs to be reduced in all. For example, if you have a letter B, uh, then it it will be reduced to Barbara. If you find letter C in the second and third kind of uh, uh, stanza that you have seen there in the poem then it can be reduced to silarent suppose if you find any uh, any latin word which starts with d that can be reduced to dari and if you start if you have any letter f it can be reduced to this one for example in this syllogistic poem let us say you consider uh, dati c and all d a t i s i so that can be reduced to only uh, d a r i i uh, that means uh, uh, the one which is in the fourth figure can be reduced to the first figure that is A A I proposition uh, with respect to the first figure in the same way if you find uh, C A M E N E S and all so that can be reduced to only silarent and all the first word tells us to which it can be reduced and all suppose if you find dimaris for example it can only be reduced to D A R I I so that is the first impression that we get from this syllogistic poem it is a very interesting poem and all it conveys a lot of information and all. So it tells us not only what kind of uh, mood it, that syllogism has and it, it also tells us I mean how this can be converted into the perfect moods and all which occur in figure number 1. So now the letter S after ith oval it can be first oval or it can be second oval uh, that occurs in that particular kind of Latin word indicates that corresponding preposition needs to be simply converted and all. So that means no x or y can be converted into no y or x some x or y are converted into some y or x and all however it does it will not apply for all x or y all x or y is different from all y or x in the same way some x or not y is different from some not x or y and all so it will not apply to o preposition and uh, uh, e uh, o preposition a preposition so it will not apply there. So now if you find a letter P after i th oval then the corresponding proportion has to be accidentally converted so this rule we will talk about it little bit later so that P rule is this that for example if you have all x or y you can change it to some y or x and all all cats are dogs that means some dogs are cats and all. So uh, this is a little bit objectionable to us but still Aristotle follows these things uh, from all x or y you can say that some y's are x and all if that is the case it is called as per accidents kind of rule. Suppose if you come across after i th oval maybe second or third kind of uh, thing if you find a letter c not in the beginning and all but after some i th oval once you come across an oval and after that you find a letter c. Uh, and the second vowel indicates that the mood has to be proved indirectly by using contradictory contradictory of the corresponding premise and all. 
So what you will do is you will take the conclusion, you will take the negation of the conclusion and you will add it to the major premise and then you will come across a contradiction now. So if you come across a contradiction then whatever you assumed is wrong and all so in that case conclusion has to follow from the premises and all. It is like uh, some kind of reductio ad absurdum method. So what you will do if you are asked to prove something first you will take the negation of the conclusion and then you will show that some contradiction arises out of it. So if the contradiction arises then you will say that negation of the conclusion is false that means the conclusion has to be correct. So this is the one which we use in mathematics so it is reductio ad absurdum method. So, so this is what we do when you come across letter C after I told not in the beginning. So now what will happen if you come across M, M in the case of chemistry is C A M E N E S there you will come across M after A. So then what you need to do, so this syllogistic poem again tells us it is a coded language and all it tells us the letter M indicates that the premise have to be interchanged and all. So that means uh, you will see where uh, the major premise occurs in all major premise always it should be stated first and followed by that you have a minor premise and then uh, you will have a conclusion in all. So usually it is an interchange of premises and all and nothing much is involved in that particular kind of thing. So all other letters such as T other letters P etc all these things which you have seen in the syllogistic poems they are only used for some kind of aesthetic purposes and all it is only for remembering that particular kind of word we will be using this particular kind of thing and all. So although Aristotle uh, has no uh, uh, formal axiomatic system and all but still you know it is a beginning starting point of formal logics and all Aristotle uh, system still has some kind of uh, axiomatic uh, it can be called as a axiomatic system uh, in, a, in, in a weaker sense so it has these four axioms, four axioms in a sense that you know whatever falls under perfect mood that means figure number 1 Barbara, Silleran, Dari and Ferio and corresponding to that so these four are considered to be axioms of uh, uh, Aristotelian syllogistic logic. So what are considered to be axioms, axioms are considered to be self evident truths which need not have to be proved in. but you have seen till now that uh, all the uh, syllogisms that fall under figure number 2, figure number 3, 4 and all they are all can be reduced to figure number 1 but whatever occurs in figure number 1 whatever uh, the syllogisms that you have observed in figure number 1 they cannot be further reduced and all. So it is in that sense it retains this axiom status and all axioms cannot be reduced further or it cannot be uh, it need not have to be proved they are all self evident kind of truths and all. So these are like this Barbara means A A A preposition all A's are B's uh, all B's are C's then all A's are C's and the other kind of axiom is this thing Silerant that means no A's are B's and all B's are C's means no A's are C's. Dari that rule says that uh, all A's are B's some B's are C's and then some A's are C's and all. In this sense Ferio can also be read like this no A's are B's uh, some B's are C's and then some A's are not C's and all. So this is what uh, considered to be some kind of axiomatic system of Aristotelian logic but uh, um, it is not so rigorous like the one which you will see later in the case of uh, uh, Russell Whitehead axiomatic system or Hilbert Ackerman axiomatic system which we are going to see uh, while dealing with uh, meta logic uh, a little bit later. So these are considered to be some of the axioms of uh, Aristotelian logic because it cannot be reduced further into any other kind of axioms and all. So these are the conversion rules which we were talking about. So this is a simple conversion rule x i y that means uh, some x are y which is similar to some y's are x some cats are uh, animals that means some animals are cats and all. This is one of the same. So in the same way no cats are dogs that is x e y is similar to y e x that means no dogs or cats. So this is a rule which we uh, use that is uh, P rule per accidents kind of rule that is for all X or Y you can convert it into some Y or X and all this is little bit uh, difficult to follow but uh, this is a rule which Aristotle allows and all and the fourth rule is uh, simple conversion that is no X or Y uh, can be converted into uh, some X or not. So these are the conversion rules uh, which we use 
and these rules which we will be using for converting uh, this thing into this particular kind of thing. So, let us consider one simple example uh, how this particular kind of uh, thing can be reduced to another kind of thing. So, now we will see how chemistries for example, which occur uh, chemistries can be reduced to which occurs in figure number uh, 2 can be reduced to silarent of figure number 1. So, this is what is uh, chemistries chemistress. So, now we need to observe the vowels here A E E this is A E E preposition and then based on how the middle term is distributed we need to say what kind of figure belongs to it. So, it appears that uh, this falls under this figure number 2 where the middle term occupies the position of a predicate. So, this is like this all A's are B's no C's are B's now you will see middle term here in the key occupying the position of a predicate now. So, now this conclusion is no C's or A or E is A. So, this is what we have. So, now you will see clearly here that uh, this is the middle term and whatever occupies the uh, whatever occupies the predicate of a conclusion should be the major term this is a minor term and wherever you will find C that is considered to be a minor premise that means no C or B is a minor premise and then wherever this term A occurs A occurs here. So, that is why it is a major premise now. So, it is arranged in this particular kind of form. So, what is that we are trying to do with this particular kind of thing why we have taken this thing this occurs in figure number 2. So, now we should be in a position to reduce this thing into the corresponding uh, kind of word which occurs in figure number 1. So, the first letter is C that means this can be reduced to only silarent now what is silarent here this is E uh, A E A E E A E with respect to figure number 1. So, now this A E E should reduce to E A E 1, but E A E 1 cannot be reduced to any other thing in all it is in that sense they are considered to be axioms in all where these first two are premises and the other one is called as a conclusion it is always valid kind of thing. So, so now what are the what are the consonants that occurs after uh, the letter A this is the first oval that means ith oval after that we have a letter M. So, now M rule says that we need to interchange the premises and all. So, what we need to do here is like this. Um, so, this cannot be changed and all. Uh, so, for, for that what we need to do first is you need to look for a proposition where you can apply some kind of simple conversion and based on that you can change the premises and all. So, now first what you will do is you will apply some kind of a simple conversion rule because it is same as this one no A's are C's no C's are A's is same as no A's are C's. So, now what happened here is this thing that this is a major term now this is a minor term. So, now M rule is the one which we need to apply of course, immediately followed by a E proposition we need to apply this S rule. So, immediately followed by this E proposition we need to apply S rule here that is what we have done here that means we have converted no C's or A's to this one. So, then we will look back and then we will apply M rule M rule says that now we need to interchange this premises and all interchanging the premises in a sense that major premise should always come first followed by that you have a minor premise. So, this one uh, wherever C occurs it is a major premise now right now that means this should go first and this should come later. So, now no C's are B's now this will become all A's all A's are B's. So, this is step number 2 step number 2. So, now 
what we have done? We have applied M rule here and S rule here and again you have to apply there is one more letter here S. So that means you need to apply S rule again. So now we need to apply S rule for this particular kind of thing. So now this changes to uh, now not this one so it goes like this. So now this changes to no B's or C's and then the rest is same and all all A's are B and then you keep it like this only no A's are C's. So now you will see here clearly uh, this is an E proposition an A proposition and E proposition. Now we need to check whether uh, this falls under figure number 1 or not. How do we know that it falls under figure number 1? It is based on how the middle term is distributed and all. So now you will see clearly here middle term is like this. Of course there is a term here the term is C and there is one more term here that is A and all which occupies the subject position and all. So now what is that we have done based on the information that is coded in this one is simply this thing. First in the first step what we have done is we changed we applied some kind of simple conversion rule to E a whatever follows after the E proposition and all. So E proposition occurs here and then after that you need to apply S rule and all here. So with that no C's or A's are converted into no A's or C's. So now once you convert it into this thing then you need to reshuffle this premises and all. Why we need to reshuffle the premises because it is a convention that major premise always should come first. So now based on this information that means C is the major term right now wherever C occurs that should come first but in this uh, case it came second and all but interchanging the premises that is what we mean by M rule. So we reshuffle the premises and all without violating the truth of this uh, categorical proposition and now this becomes like this no C's are B's all A's are B's. So now again uh, there is one more operation here one more consonant S here we need to look for only these four letters and all S, M, P and C. So these are the letters that we need to look for especially the consonants that we need to look for and the other things which you need to look for are vowels and all which tells us what kind of mode the proposition is in. So then what we did was you can still apply simple conversion rule to this one. So now no C's or B's are converted into no B's or C's it is like no cats or dogs that means no dogs or cats and all let us say one of the same and all. So now we kept it this thing as it is now we reduce this thing into this format and all. So now what we have achieved is simply this that chemistress is considered to be uh, the one which uh, which occurs in figure number 2 that means E A E E 2 can be reduced to A uh, E A E 1. So like this uh, many things can be converted into uh, this uh, particular kind of thing and all. Uh, there are some other examples which you which we can take into consideration. Uh, so these uh, things can be reduced to this particular kind of thing and all. So this is the M rule so M rule tells, tells us that uh, shifting of major premise in the place of minor premise and all. So then we apply S rule to E proposition which occurs in the major premise that is what we have done in the case of uh, chemistress and all. For example in this case how do we reduce from festino to ferio, ferio occurs in figure number 1, festino occurs in uh, figure number 2 again. So because middle term is occupying the position of a predicate in both the things and all no A's is B some C's is B etc some C's is not A then what you need to do here is is that immediately following E we have a letter called S S stands for simple conversion rule and then after that there are no other consonants that we can will be interested in that means T and N does not convey any information now we need to look for only S M P and C and all. So uh, now no A's is B in the first premise is by simple conversion is converted into no B's or A's and all and you keep the same thing some C's are B and some C's are not A and then it, it changes into uh, the ferio 
part which is uh, which falls under figure number 1. So like this we can convert uh, uh, things into uh, corresponding Latin word in which occurs in figure number 1. So in some cases uh, uh, things would be little bit difficult and all uh, like uh, uh, suppose what happens when you come across a word uh, let us say C and all rather than this one. So now let us consider uh, one more example in which instead of uh, you know you come across instead of uh, S and M you come across a word uh, a letter C and all. So that means the move the syllogism needs to be proved by using uh, uh, contradiction rule indirect method we can use uh, in particular. So now we are trying to convert book or do. Uh, to something like this can only be reduced to Barbara because the first letter is B and then it should be reduced to uh, this thing only just let me just go into the details of this one uh, Bocardo occurs in the fourth figure uh, so this is the fourth one and then uh, it should be reduced to it can only be reduced to the first letter which occurs in figure number one that means the letter that starts with B is only Barbara kind of syllogism. So now this can be written like this A O B that means some A's are not B's and then this is C A B and A O C. Uh, just a second so A O B and C A B this is not in this particular kind of format this we will look into some kind of example with which we can come to know. So let us try to convert actually this should be in this particular kind of format. If it is in the fourth figure, the middle term should be here, but here it occurs in this one, it occurs in this one. We will change it a little bit and see uh, what is the case. This is okay, A O B is a fine, and then this should be B A C. So B A C, and then this converts into this one. So now what we need to do here is this thing. So now what you came across after this uh, oval is the C rule whenever you come across uh, a letter C that means this syllogism can only be proved by means of indirect methods that means you can only prove with the help of a contradiction. So now so what you will do here is this particular kind of thing. So just one second uh, now this is a major term and this is a minor term and whenever wherever major term occurs that is a major premise and minor premise uh, minor term occurs that is considered to be minor premise and all. So now what you will do is uh, there is a uh, some kind of uh, thing which we follow A E I N O in this one. So A and O are opposite to contradictory to each other and E and I are contradictory to each other that means diagonals are contradictory to each other. So now what is contradiction in contradiction to A O C that is A proposition. So A proposition is the one which we, we take into consideration A, A stands for all A's are C C. So now what we have taken is this that we have denied the contradiction and all and that is what we have taken into consideration and then added to that the you have to add it to the major premise here the major premise is the one in which the major term occurs. So now this is what we need to see all A's are uh, C's all B's are C's so now so what is the conclusion that uh, uh, we get 
let us say all A's are C's now, for example. No, 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 one second, all A's are because C is a middle term, it should not occur. So, now this should be the case all A's are B's. So, now this one all A's are B's is uh, wherever the minor term occurs, minor term occurs in this one, this particular kind of premise A O B. So, now this and this are incompatible to each other. So, denial of the contradiction leads to some kind of conclusion which is contradictory to the minor premise. So, what is that we have done? We are just trying to prove by contradiction that. Uh, so, this is the conclusion that follows from this particular kind of thing A O B and B A C only this follows from this one. So, since we have come across a rule C we are stating that this can only be proved by some kind of indirect method. Now, what is the indirect method? First what we have done is we take we took the negation of the conclusion as your first premise and added it to the major premise and then we led to it leads to some kind of a conclusion which is incompatible with uh, this particular kind of thing A O B. That means your uh, this premise is wrong and all that should be this one only A O B and B A C and A O C. So, now how it gets reduced to this particular kind of thing is uh, uh, what we need to uh, find out. So, uh, so, in one particular kind of thing we will try to prove this uh, this particular kind of thing and all. So, uh, in the case of uh, this particular kind of thing we can prove this is what is a uh, Bocardo which can be proved in this particular kind of way. So, so this already can we have converted into uh, some kind of uh, a a a preposition and all. So, now the only thing is is that we need to see uh, so now let us just let me finish uh, this particular kind of thing this is not still in a a a a preposition 1 and all. So, now we need to apply uh, some kind of uh, uh, rules which we need to use. So, that is uh, this thing uh, instead of B's you take uh, into consideration letter C uh, and instead of C you take into consideration uh, what happens here this should be like this middle term should be like this you take C as A and then B wherever B is there you replace it with C and all. So, now this becomes uh, this A A now so one second no, no this will not apply here. So, this is an A A preposition, but somehow this has to be converted into uh, A A A 1 and all. Uh, we need to use some kind of rule, so that we can convert this thing into A A A preposition now. So, but uh, in this case what we have done simply is this that uh, first we have taken uh, the negation of the conclusion and this is what it is the case and then we added it to the major premise and we showed that we got this particular kind of thing uh, which uh, seems to be contradictory to your minor premise now that means A O C should be wrong and all it should be uh, uh, that means uh, uh, negation of the conclusion leads to contradiction that means you cannot negate the conclusion and all A O C follows and all from this particular kind of thing. Uh, that means we, we showed that this uh, conclusion follows from the premises by using some kind of indirect method and all. So, now we will move on further little bit and then we will see what are the other things which we can do based on this particular kind of thing. So, this is what we have done already. So, now all B's are C's uh, all A's are C's now all A's are B's. So, now ultimately this reduces to uh, this particular kind of thing all A's are B's. Okay. 
So now, so far uh, we discussed about uh, how the syllogistic poem behaves and all. There are certain things which we will uh, still need to be discussed in greater detail, especially whenever the letter C occurs and all. How do we prove how Boccardo kind of thing can be reduced to Barbara, etc. and all. It needs to be dealt in greater detail, etc. So now there are some kind of immediate inference rules. Uh, that means if you have A, E, I, and O, how this A is converted into some kind of I proposition or E is converted into uh, I proposition etc and all. So that is what uh, we come to know uh, in these three rules and all. So they are these rule, three rules are like this conversion rule. Uh, the converse of a standard form of a categorical proposition is formed simply by interchanging the subject to predicate thing and all. Wherever you have a subject you replace it with the predicate then it will become a conversion kind of rule. Only E and I propositions can be converted that means Suppose if you have a proposition called no cats or dogs, it can be converted into no dogs or cats and all. In the same way some cats or dogs means some dogs or cats and all. But it cannot be applied to O proposition and S proposition because the meaning changes and all. So that is what happens and all. This is what we have in the standard form all SRP. So this uh, no SRP and some SRP and all these things are converted into this particular kind of thing all S or P is different from all P's or S that is why it cannot be reduced to all P's or S. Some P's are uh, some S or P is converted into some P's or S that means same as that particular kind of thing and in the same way some S or not P is converted into some P's or not S and all which is which is totally different from some S or not P. So now conversion applies to only E and I proposition. Now there is an important operation which is uh, very important especially when whenever your syllogisms is not in standard format we need to apply these uh, rules and all. For example if you say all cats are non fish and all for example if you say that particular kind of thing non fish is referring to some kind particular kind of class uh, which are uh, completely excluded from what we call it as fish and all. So 1 minus whatever you consider as fish and all that is constitutes non fish and all. So the obversion consists of two steps and all. So what you will do in the obversion is first you will change the quality and all. For example if you have all x or y you change it to no x or y and all. In the same way if you have some x or y you change the quality to some x or not y and all. In the second step what you will do is you will replace the predicate term with this corresponding complement and all. For example if you have a letter called fish you replace the letter fish that is in the predicate with non fish and all are non cats non dogs etc. So the complement of x is this thing the complement of x is a class containing all things that are not members of x and all 1 minus x is considered to be the complement of this one. So the term complement is a word which uh, or phrase which denotes the class called complement and all for instance donkeys if you say and its complement is non donkeys and all in the same way cats means non cats and all. The ones which are not cats is considered to be non cats and all 1 minus the, that particular kind of class and all. So abortion consists of two steps first you change the quality all x or y to no x or y and then it changes to no x non y and all. So this is what happens all s or p changes to first to no s or p and in the second step it changes to no s or non p in the same way e proposition no SRP in the first step it changes to uh, all SRP and all in the second step it changes to all SR non P because predicate is replaced by its complement and all so non P re replaces P in the same way in the case of some SRP in the first step of aversion it changes to some SR not P. Now in the second step we need to replace P the letter P with non P and all so that is why it becomes some SR not non P and all. So this is the one which happens and aversion applies to all the categorical propositions and all that means you can have immediate inferences based on aversion in this format. A can be uh, changed to its uh, aversion that is no S or non P which is one of the same and all. Aversion applies to all kinds of categorical propositions. There is a third rule which is called as contraposition rule. Contraposition rule is formed just by uh, replacing the subject term with the the term complement of its predicate term and we replace the predicate term with this complement of its subject term. So it includes uh, uh, 
uh, two steps and all. Uh, for example, it is simply like you know law of contraposition and all. P implies Q means uh, implies not Q implies not P and all. So, for example, if you have uh, something called all S R P, so there are four steps for A to its uh, corresponding contraposition and all. So this uh, changes to uh, first thing is uh, uh, used aversion rule. So then it becomes uh, you have to change the quality of this one. Then you have to put complementary of this particular kind of thing. No S R non P C and all. So now we use some kind of conversion on this particular kind of thing because no S R non P is same as no non P R S and all. So that is why the step number 3 no non P R S and all. Now we have converted P S into S and all. I mean we replace subject term with the predicate predicate term with the subject and all. So now in the fourth step here all non P S are non S and all. Now again we used aversion rule and then we converted into uh, this particular kind of thing in all, all non P's are non S. So what is that we have done here? Um, there are some four steps for A to be converted into its corresponding contra position. Now. But in simple terms, uh, uh, we have used all kinds of operations here. Ultimately, we converted all S or P into all non P's are non S, which is considered to be the contra position of that particular kind of thing. So contra position is valid for only a and O preposition that means suppose if you infer uh, from A you infer all non P's are non S that is considered to be valid and from the O preposition if you infer uh, some um, uh, something called some non P's are non S and all for example from from a preposition some S are P's you infer some non P's are non S and all. So then also uh, uh, also it applies in some non P's are not non S and all in that case it, uh, it, uh, it is considered to be valid and all. So there is a way to memorize this particular kind of thing the dots over that particular kind of thing is the one uh, which you need to take into consideration which is cons the first one is considered to be an odd rule which works for all kinds of uh, four standard forms and all. So any proportion can be reduced to its corresponding aversion that is considered to be a kind of valid inference and all. And conversion we need to see the ones uh, the letters that are with uh, double dots and all it applies to only E and I propositions this is a way to remember it. So we need to observe those ovals which are with stars and all which uh, dots are there in the contraposition it applies to A proposition and O proposition and all. So in the letter contraposition uh, you need to observe um, the ovals which occurs there. Of course, O is the oval which occurs here, but you need to ignore that one. It's just for the sake of remembrance only, there is no criteria which is used here. For the sake of memory, we are using this particular kind of thing and all. So this is uh, what is considered to be uh, a square of opposition, uh, where the diagonals are considered to be contradictory to each other, whereas uh, uh, the ones which are at the same level are considered to be in the first level. It is considered to be contrary to each other, and then uh, the square of opposition will be uh, like this. So uh, it can be explained in this particular kind of thing and all. If A is true then obviously E has to be false and all that means A and E are contradicted to each other if I is true that is some X or Y is true then obviously it is negation some X or not Y is obviously it has to be false and all. So if A is false then obviously O has to be true because uh, A and O are contradictory to each other. So in the same way uh, this tells us how A, E, I and O are related to each other. In the same way if uh, uh, E is true uh, then obviously it is a contradiction A has to be false if I is false then O has to be true and if E is false then it is uh, uh, negation it is contradiction uh, that is I which occupies the position of a diagonal which has to be true and if A uh, is true I if if A and O A is true and O in the case of O it is unknown and all. So this is what uh, happens in the case of uh, uh, square of opposition in a simple nutshell I will uh, end this uh, lecture by stating that these are the some of the important relations between A, E, I and O.
So this is uh, the famous uh, square of uh, opposition. So which is like this. First, we need to write all the universal propositions like this A E, and we have I and O, and so A and O are contradicted to each other. I and E are uh, again contradicted to each other, and then there are some other kinds of relations between these two things. So these are contraries contrary to A and E are contrary to each other and I and O are called as sub contrary and then this is called as uh, implication and all is subaltern, superaltern etc. depending upon uh, the arrow which is there here. So that means all these things are related in this particular kind of way. So now we quickly need to know what we mean by uh, contrary, contradictory, etc. This tells us how uh, A and E are related to each other. So now, in a quick uh, nutshell, so two statements are considered to be contradictory if both cannot be, uh, both can uh, contradictory propositions cannot be both true. They cannot be both false as well. That means one proposition is true, another proposition has to be false. Contrary propositions cannot be both true, but they can both be false and all. So these things can both be false and all. If one is false, another one can also be false, but both cannot be true and all. But in the case of uh, subcontrary propositions I and O, so the in this case it can both be false, but it cannot be both be false, but can be both be true and all. That is, some cats are dogs, and some cats are not dogs, can be both true and all, but both cannot be false and all and subaltern must be true if its superaltern is true and the superaltern is false if the subaltern is false and all. So these are the relationship between A, E, I and O this tells us how these categorical propositions are related to each other. So in this lecture what we have seen is simply this that we have seen we have analyzed the syllogistic poem in greater detail and then we have seen how one uh, imperfect mood can be reduced to another one. And then we also discussed about uh, three important operations aversion, conversion and contraposition and then we have seen uh, what we mean by contradictory, contrary and uh, uh, how when we say that it is sub contrary and when it is say subaltern etc and all. So Aristotelian theory of logic uh, gives us uh, some kind of uh, uh, greater analysis of these categorical propositions, but it has its own limitations when it when it comes to hypothetical syllogisms are some kind of complex kind of syllogisms which involves more than three terms Aristotelian logics uh, may not work in modern logics uh, uh, there are certain things which which are easy e easy to do in modern logics now. So with this we will end this uh, lecture.